we've got some very interesting news, I feel like, something I don't feel like I've seen in a very, very long time. This is obviously off the back of those two really tragic deaths at Brixton Academy um, during the Asake concert here in London, where two people unfortunately um, died as a result of the crush and the stampede outside of the venue, where loads of ticketless people try to basically bum rush or gate crash the event in an effort to try and see Asake perform maybe his last date here in London. And one person died, which is a, a, a young lady who was a single mother of two, um, Rebecca Ukulmelo, I think. And the other person was called Gabby Hutchinson, I think, who was a security guard or a police officer who was outside, who, you know, trying to basically keep people safe and end up dying in the line of duty. So absolutely tragic news to, to kind of relay back. But I've never seen this happen before. This is news currently um, from yesterday. It says Brixton Academy license is suspended after a fatal crush. Now, I see this stuff happening with nightclubs and whatnot. And I think I've said previous occasions that I think that's one of the annoying things about nightlife in general here in London is that whenever there's an issue, whether it's a drug overdose, whether it's something involving SA or whatnot, there's, there's very... Um, on very rare occasions, is there any kind of um, idea to mediate or to educate or to kind of review and to work out solutions for, you know, avoiding such instances again? The first thing they do, the only first response to any kind of crisis involving nightlife and events is always to suspend or to close venues. Now, that happens a lot with quote-unquote independent venues, but you don't see stuff that you'd imagine is backed by Live Nation, O2, it's an established venue, Brixton Academy, losing its license. You usually see a lot happening with like smaller clubs. So the fact that this has happened goes to show the the kind of seriousness of the issue and maybe goes to show that maybe there are lawsuits and litigations happening in the background already that they're getting wind of. So they're trying to basically appease the sentiment out there by spending license. But I've never seen this happening to an established venue in a very, very long time or maybe ever. This courtesy of BBC News, it says... The Brixton O2 Academy's license has been suspended as it emerged concerns were raised about the strength of the front doors nearly three years before the fatal crush at the concert last week. Ah, it's all coming out now. Afro pop singer Ashake um, gig was cut short when a number of uh, a large number of people tried to enter the foyer on Thursday. Rebecca Ukumelo, 33, died on Saturday, while Gabby Hutchinson died on Monday. The South London venue's license has been suspended until January 16th, so no events are going to go on until the 16th and maybe longer. Lambeth Council has met earlier and decided to take the internal, the interim decision to suspend the Academy's license following the severity of the events and the risk to the public safety from a lack of crowd control at the front doors until a full hearing takes place on January 16th. During the council meeting, the Metropolitan Police said that there had been a similar crush on the 2nd of February 2020 when concerns were raised about the strength of the doors uh, during a concert with Naira Marley. Really? Naira Mali calls that much of a crush, routed. Um, another Afrobeat singer. The funny thing is, I had been there for a Travis Scott concert. I went there. What else I went there for? I can't think. Travis Scott. What else? Something. I remember saw something else. I went there. Maybe a metal gig also. And it's always been a bit of a sketchy Hellraiser type of venue. But never to this sort of level. The one thing I always remember from Motor Brixton Academy is just the entrance. It's so weird. Because they make you basically queue down one side road to come back up to the front where the venue is. So when you're walking up to the venue, you kind of feel like you can go in, but you can't. You go down the side road, then they let you go in that way. But then sometimes if you queue long enough and you look up at the front of the queue, you see some people walking in through the front door. I'm not sure if they're VIP or if they're the bouncers. It's a very strange way of going in and out of that venue. It didn't make any sense. The crowd management, I feel like when you're inside, wasn't too bad. They did a good job of like making sure people, you know, if you went to go to the toilets or went to go buy merch or to the bar, it's pretty easy to get in and out. I feel like, sorry, I hit the mic again. But when it comes to trying to get into the venues, it's always been a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. But again, RIP Rebecca and Gabby, man, absolutely tragic. It says the police um, force wanted Lambeth Council Licensing Subcommittee to suspend the license throughout the, the investigation. The owner has instead offered to remain closed for 28 days. Okay, see, this is the venue offering to do so. So for sure, there are some lawsuits in the work. One show has already been postponed and another on New Year's Eve has been cancelled. Five more shows due to take place between now and January 16th will be postponed. 
Um, at the meeting, lawyer representing the police said the owner's offer to temporary curbs was inappropriate and wrong. It's not right it's just to leave the decision as serious as this in the hands of the licensee. Whilst that has happened last Thursday, of course, was exceptional. No one should begin to think that it was unique or could not happen again. Look at that, man. So, yeah, that's... If you just look at the sky view of the outside venue of Brixton Academy, if I'm not mistaken, this way here towards the left-hand side, you see of this picture, is where Brixton Station is. So you kind of walk around this way and you feel like you can just walk in like that, but you actually can't. You have to actually queue down this way. Most most of the time, security will make you queue like this. And then when you go out, you all go out this way. You go out one way or maybe through one or two of these doors. But sometimes if you queue long enough, you'll see people walking through this. Way. I'm not sure if they're VIP or if they've got O2 priority or something. But it's a very strange place to be in, in around. And this whole road anyway is very busy. Um, it's the main strip in Brixton. All the shops are here. The famous KFC is always up there where people always get shot and beaten up and whatnot. There's a McDonald's too, I think, somewhere around here. And loads of other Caribbean restaurants and whatnot. So it's always a big... And I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's even a Morley's down the right, down this side, I think, if I'm not mistaken, as you come out towards the left. So it's a very popular juncture. So I can just imagine the amount of people that are in and around that place anyway, waiting just for, you know, to see what the vibe was after the event. People that just, you know, hang that would be there anyway. But then maybe because there's a famous Afro beats, Afro pop singer playing at the venue, it attracts more people outside. Plus people that were already there to go and see the show. Plus the ones that were getting FOMO and didn't have a ticket and went to come and sneak in. Because I'm sure that's the thing that happens often at Brixton Academy. If you are clever, uh, because there's so many entrances and so many different points of entry and exit, you could probably sneak in there if you are quite determined to do so. I'm sure some people have kind of figured it out, which is probably why a lot of people went out there and tried to chance it. And if it wasn't already sold out, they probably would have worked it out anyway. Or if maybe if the amount of people that didn't have tickets wasn't so excessive, then it probably wouldn't have been such an issue. But I feel like because it was already sold out and the amount of people that came there was, so people are saying anywhere between 1,000 to 3,000, it just became too much to bear. And unfortunately, people had to lose their lives. But again, I've never in my life seen an established venue like an O2 lose their license off the back or something like this. This is really, really serious. Um, Steph, um, sorry, Stephen Walsh, KC, representing the Academy Music Group, told councillors, it is clearly far too early as the police have accepted to draw any conclusions about the cause of the tragedy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let alone the point the finger at blame at any party. And, okay, he's a lawyer, so I guess he has to do what he has to do. The O2 Academy Brixton recognizes the gravity of the events which occurred on the night of December 15th and expresses its sincere condolences to the families of those who died during the tragic event and its genuine concerns for anyone affected by it. Licensed holder, Academy Group Music Limited, is committed to ensuring his vital lessons are learned through its own detailed internal investigation. So they're trying their best to appease all the kind of people blaming them and saying they're going to do their internal investigation. And also, they're kind of subtly saying without saying that they obviously plan to reopen as soon as the investigation is over. The first sold out concert in a week of a shake had to be cut short when a large number of people tried to enter the venue. Gabby Hutchison, 23, from Gravesend in Kent, who died following a crush with a security contractor working at the venue. Nursing graduate Rebecca Ukumelo from Newham, East London, who also died the following days, was a mother of two children. And like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure if she's from my borough, then I probably know her via some other people you know, within my same age range and whatnot. A 21-year-old woman is, remains in critical condition in the hospital. Hopefully she recovers and gets well very, very soon. The summer review is a fast-track review process brought by the police when they consider the premises concerned is involved in a serious crime. Councillor Fred said an interim suspension given the severity of the events on December 15th, the risk to the public safety as a consequence of a particular serious disorder rising from the lack of crowd control at the front of the doors of the venue remains high if the venue are able to operate as before. So I guess we're going to see what happens after the 16th and get an idea what the deal is. But we know who to blame. We have to blame the people who arrived there without tickets. And also you have to blame the security and uh, crowd control outside of the venue. It's pretty blatant who was at fault here. But, you know, with these sort of things, many, many bits of monies are on the line and whatnot. So they have to obviously do the best they can to um, skirt and avoid any responsibility because responsibility means compensation. And compensation could basically mean the risk of the business going completely under. So it makes complete sense. But it is quite sickening to see because people's lives are actually lost. And the first thing these people are worried about is their money and whatnot. It's absolutely disgusting. But hey, hopefully some lessons are learned from this and we kind of do go on to do better going forward. You can only hope one can only hope.